River Rats, we are on the big water and we are loaded down for two straight days of camping and fishing. And I'm down here because our rivers are pretty much dried up where I'm at and there's some really big fish down here. That's always a good motivator. So let's go. Well, we are floating aimlessly down river. Normally I'd zip down and find a spot to set up camp and then start fishing, but we need dinner and I want to catch some big fish. I'm gonna really try hard to focus on catching big fish, but I, I want to get something to eat first, so we're going to start bumping, then switch over to anchoring if we're fortunate enough to catch dinner and try to get maybe a big flathead. Wouldn't snub my nose at a big blue cat either. Fingers crossed. Okay. Trolling motor's down. Bait. Caught me a whole bunch of these guys before I left. I don't know. If I can only fish for, with one bait for the rest of my life for cats, it'd be a hard time saying no to these. I'm gonna start with the head chunk. Partially because it seems like the bigger fish like the head chunk and partially because it seems to, they definitely stay on the hook a lot better. How fast are we going? Four mile an hour current, that ain't bad. And get a lot faster than that on this river. I'm excited. Two whole days of solitude. Just hanging out with me, myself, and I, and hopefully a big old catfish. That would be sweet. This should be entertaining too, because running a trolling motor for bumping is not like riding a bike. At least not for me. Some people are just masterminds at it. I'm, I'm something, but I'm not a mastermind. Down periscope. Start with four ounces and see how that treats us. That's one thing that's different on these big rivers, like little rivers, I'm looking for bends. And this is kind of a bend, but it's not like a big substantial one. But there's enough depth to hold a catfish. Hopefully they're here. It'd be sweet to bang one out quick. How often does it work that way though? Maybe for you guys. Probably my favorite part of fishing by myself is that uh, I don't have to worry about other people's expectations. I can try goofy stuff and experiment and whenever I want. I kind of like that. I also like fishing with other people too, don't get me wrong. That is one benefit of being by myself is... Ooh, Rock tried to grab it. You know, I can do whatever. Yeah, we'll run this bank for a good long ways and nothing happening, then we'll drive till we see something else that looks good. We've got several little taps so far. So small they can't even get that bait down their mouth. So small they might even be too small to eat. I'm gonna bump to this next little divot. And then uh, I'm gonna head down riverways till I see a stretch I like. And I've been trying several different things. The end result is just a few taps, no fish in the boat. I do have eggs, brats, potatoes. I'm not gonna starve, but I've been craving fried fish. I'm gonna keep moving. Ooh. He just folded it. Yeah, I don't think he's 130, but he ain't bad. So it's, I talking to Ella on the phone and Rod just folds. Not a bad one, he's freaking out. I think I just popped him off a log. My net is not ready. <laughs> wow, I can't get over how he just buried that rod. That's a, yeah, I'll uh, I'll call you back. <laughs> All right, bye. Oh, that's funny. Did you see that rod just full? <laughs> oh, I suppose I should get my net ready. 
Not our eater, but I ain't gonna complain. I'll gladly eat bratwurst. We catch, keep catching fish like this guy. Well, now he's wore out. Um, let's see, probably gonna have to land him behind the boat. Need a net man in this current. There we go. Well, that was an adventure just getting him in the net. There's just enough current right here to make life difficult. Okay. Well, he grew quite a bit. Fish in this river are just angry. Well, after a th slow start, that, uh, that gets your blood flowing when a fish hits a rod like that. At least it does for me. This is not my eater, but about as fun as you get. Ella and I were talking about what if I caught a 130. This one's about right at 30. It's hard to imagine a 130 out of river and what that fight would be like. Alrighty, amigo. See ya. I think that's a sign that I'm gonna camp here. I came over here thinking I might camp here. Now I'm pretty positive I'm gonna camp here. A lot of stuff going on here. And it's just really nice camping spot. There's plenty of firewood. I'm gonna cook me a feast, I think. Hopefully the feast includes some blue cat, but if not, bratwurst, bratwurst will suffice. Yeah, I think, I think I'll pull the boat up right here tonight, throw rods out there, put three out there, and Put one down, down there past that drop off. That's probably the one that's gonna keep getting hit, but <laughs> if that happens, then I'll move the boat down there tomorrow. Ugh. Got this. Food cooler, cooking stuff, camping stuff, campfire grill top. There's so much room for activities in this boat now. I'm gonna leave the throw net in here, I think. I should leave this cooler in here too, now that I think about it. But that's home. Hopefully it treats us good tonight. I'm gonna go look for dinner. Some more dinner. Yeah, I don't know if bumping is the answer to catfish nuggets. I think it's uh I'm gonna reel up, head back to camp, get everything set up and it's brats and taters time. Taters sound wonderful. Lots of fish on the fish finder. Not sure what they are. I have a pretty good idea. Probably a lot of, a lot of big head, silver carp. I'm gonna get the boat parked, rods casted out, and I'm hungry. Need firewood though. I need to reposition the boat too. The only fish we caught came here. So, I mean, obviously I'm kind of inclined to like it from that point of view. If I, we don't catch anything, I might move further down. So many options. Fire time, gonna make me some campfire taters. Might even cook the brats on, on the campfire. I suck at making campfires, I really do. But these things make it easy. Bigfoot bushcraft fire starters. Promo code Spencer Bauer, save you a little bit, and then you look like a fire starting expert, even if you're not, which I am not. 
I just stack them on top and then let her rip. That's pretty much all it takes. So they're both going. One's big but dry, so that one should light right up. There's one nice thing about driftwood. Usually, as long as it's dry, it lights right up. Do we have any real fire yet? She's getting there. Let that go. Let that get hot. And then uh, it's tater time. Which tater time is some of my favorite time. Got a few taters cut up. I'm going to cut up a whole lot more. Especially because I'm going to make them into hash browns. And if you cook them in butter and then you fry them later on, all the leftovers, they crisp up so nice. I went with the Yukon Golds because it sounded good. It's feeling fancy. They were moderately sanitary too. Put this tin foil down on top of a cooler for cutting these, and but I didn't wash them off. They said moderately sanitary. They're sliced and diced, and I'm just gonna keep it simple. Season the crap out of them with Old Bay. Got half a stick of butter in there, and then I'm gonna do the next one the exact same way. We put them on the uh, the grill rack. Definitely gonna have to put more tin foil on it. We'll double wrap them. Taters are done, which means it's brat time. Oh no, that sucks. Mm. He's gonna be dirty. Definitely not going to waste food, though. Hmm, do I cook them all? I think so. Then we'll turn them into, like, a scramble in the morning. And I got some tortillas. We'll warm those up, too. Oh, that one's torn. It happens. Nothing like some charred tortillas. Yep. Them is gonna be good. Ooh, we got some charred brats going down too. Dinner is done. Definitely gonna have to let these cool down a smidge though. It's good timing. I've been kind of anxious about changing baits, but I didn't want to put my hands on any more shad until I was done cooking. Now I have that done, I'm gonna throw me a big old log on there. So I don't have to mess with it as much. Save those little guys for cooking and poking the fire. I'm kind of a fan of poking fires. Top secret ingredient, horseradish mustard. That's what I was gonna put on the fish. Problem was, we didn't catch any fish that, at least not ones that I would consider eating. But I was prepared, got brats. Love me some horseradish mustard. Best part is taters are cooked and they're going to fry up real quick for uh, probably going to do a brunch tomorrow morning. And if my eight pound blue doesn't show up, I got eggs. Things have quieted down quite a bit. And I think I'm going to call it an evening. Hopefully see you with the fish on the line. We're definitely going to have to boot camp. And get a single bite up here. Alright, Red Bull time. Huh. Looks like we had something going on here though. Maybe. Might just be wishful thinking. Yeah. It's a log. <laughs> mm. Impressively tangled. 
Oh, got her. Sweet. We got nibbled on. Got nibbled on pretty good, actually. What if there's Moon Eye down here? Give her a rip. I got a lot of shad. Brought a lot of shad. I'd really like some fresh, fresh, fresh. You can give me a better shot of a flathead. There's a gar. Oh, there's one. Oh, I whiffed him. God dang it. Should let him take it a little longer, I guess. We'll give him another shot. Not gonna lie, I really like fishing for these things. Especially because it's bobber fishing. All right, on to the next one. I think the other thing I really like about these guys is they, they'll be in like 20 feet of water and be feeding right on top, which I think is kind of neat. Oh, there he goes. Got him. Sweet. Catfish gold. Gonna add him to the pile. Making a pile, slowly but surely. Go down to the next swing dam and try to do that again. I don't think I could watch a bobber go under and not say opal. I mean, I say ope a lot, but that might be, be tough. Threw the net around a little bit. Got uh, some shad, a couple big heads or silver carp, and did end up squeaking out in another moon eye. So between that and the old shad, we're fishing. I'm going to start my day out bumping. Still looking for my catfish dinner. Probably give this a couple hours and then, uh, then we'll switch to anchoring. The other side of it is I don't have a generator and I don't know how much more juice the old trolling motor has. Down she goes. Some stout current over here. Even by this river standards. Come on, eight pounder. There's one. That might be my eight pounder. I like it. Especially after the poor fishing yesterday. Feels like lunch. It's because it absolutely is. Wow, he's all tangled up. I probably sound really surprised at how tangled up he is. Cause he's like impressively tangled and in a weird way. Because fried fish sounds good, I'm actually gonna even net this guy. Come here. <laughs> Dinner served, guys. Sweet. Probably be lunch, brunch, whatever. But that didn't take very long. I like it. That is exactly what I was hoping for. He's gonna be awesome. So I'm gonna get him on a stringer and bleed them out and then probably bump this some more. Then run up and make some lunch shortly. We have live action. There he is. Oh, my drag is very loose. I pulled over to clean me a blue cat. I think I might have me another blue cat. 
he's also in that other line. Oh, he just popped off, I think. Sure did. Got in that other line and popped off. Huh. That's annoying. It's a good reminder I should probably tighten all my other drags down too. Bummer. Get her back out there. Get back to work though. These guys are making it difficult to clean my fish. Is he going to get in the other line too? I think we're clear. I think this guy's lucky I caught that one earlier. He's very lucky I caught that one earlier. Back in the old stagnant poop hole. Home of the blue cat. Fun fact, the only ones getting eaten are the ones with the ultra chubs on them. Could be a location, but I've caught three fish and had several bites and that's the only thing getting them. Only thing getting touched. You would have made a fine eater, but it's your lucky day, dude. See ya. Well, this is the most action I've seen since I've been here. Granted, no giants, but I think I'm gonna do more anchor. Might pick up a flathead doing that too. And that wouldn't hurt my feelings. Oh, that sucks. That was a hell of a fish. Oh my. <laughs> so what happened was, log floated into the line, and then a fish hits it when the log's in the line and snaps me off at the hook. Wow. Would have liked to have seen that one. Well, he missed the hook. Wonder why he didn't get hooked. Just gonna assume he wasn't that big. Oh, big old splash. I think this will be my last spot before lunch. I think we'll uh, send a big dog, just because we can, and I like it. Man, if that thing gets buried, I'll be shaking by the time I get to the fishing rod, I'll tell you that much. Got this little moon eye, dude. Might as well give him a rip. Pretty much use moon eye and gold eye interchangeably. They're not the same species, but I don't know enough to know enough. So that's where I am on the, the gold eye moon eye ordeal. I just know they're good bait. You know, according to the Meat Eater podcast, the difference between a creek and a crick is a crick has a tire in it. This is, uh, this is one big crick. The big bait got no love, neither did any of the other ones, but I think I'm, I'm hungry. So let's, uh, let's go fry some fish and taters, then I'll get after them after that.
One th funny thing about cooking is growing up, I kind of really disliked it. And then there was this epiphany moment when I learned that you can cook outside. Once I discovered grilling and campfire cooking and all that stuff, really come to enjoy it. Definitely not an expert, but I know what I like. Just like these crispy potatoes. I'm gonna eat like a king and be nicely fueled up to reel in a hundred pounder. At least that, that's how the plan plays out in my mind. I'm honestly absolutely stuffed with really good food and I don't feel like doing anything, but if I'm gonna lay around, might as well lay around with uh, baits in the water. Or at least that's my thought process on the whole ordeal. So we're gonna go try to find us a dandy spot. 100 pounder in it. That'd be so cool. I don't know, we'll give her a rip. Not a pile of fish, but might have the right one. The old poor man's power poles. In this type of muck, they do work pretty good. Not gonna use the good goods here, but we got plenty of shad, so we'll start with those. These nice and firm. Some of these are getting old fast. Here we got four baits. I need one more. Might as well just send send a whole one. That's kind of where my mind's at right now. I don't know much, but I do know big bait doesn't necessarily mean big fish. But sometimes it does. It's always exciting when it gets hit, so we're gonna let one rip. Yep, right on that edge. Marked a few in there. Well, he folded it over pretty nice. Well, he's not giant. But he's a fish. It's kind of cool how he hit it. Oh, he's so tiny. <laughs> he hit it, pulled it down, and then just stopped. And I hogtied him. I even hooked him? And I think he got his fight out there. To answer the question I did, did I actually hook him? Like my chunk of moon eye back, because I don't have very much of that. All right. Be a fine eater, but I just ate a pile, so back he goes. Give this spot another couple minutes. It's impressive how he fit that bait down the hatch. It gets dark so fast this time of year. It's like five something. Sun's getting low. I think I'm gonna make a run. Go uh, head down river ways. Wow. Second big fish just destroyed me in the holder. I guess my drags are a little tight. This is getting dumb. Wow. Whatever. Second one on this trip that I busted off or had bust off in the holder. It's impressive. I don't know what you do. 
Drag stuck. Too much heat. Never thought I'd say that. I was on a short one too. He pulled it down nice and slow because he was absolutely enormous. How big we'll never know. I uh, would have liked a second chance. Well, actually, that was my second chance. Third time's a charm, maybe? Maybe we'll be switching over to 80 for the big water. Take it down. Are you a flathead or small fish? I got him there. Well, he ain't as big as the one that got away, I don't think, but he ain't bad. He's kind of acting like a flathead, and he's gone. Could I have any worse luck? Probably. We got something going on over here. Two things going on. Nothing too crazy, I don't think. Might be gar things. Or small flathead things. Turtle things. You'll be the last route I reel in. Got a time for one more spot, I think, before I head back to camp. Yep, whoever was packing on it left. So we're leaving too. The wind switched directions and uh, definitely picked up speed. Temps dropping. I think the front is officially here. Sometimes they'll. Lots of times they hit good before the front rolls in. Sometimes they hit good during the front. They rarely hit well afterwards. Come on, one redemption fish. Probably never going to fish 60 pound leader on this river again. <laughs> I swear it always rains when I'm on this river when it's not supposed to. That front came through and everything chilled out. No more action. That's the way she goes lots of times. When I go fishing, I usually just hope for opportunity, and I got opportunity at two pretty awesome fish, and learned a lot. Learned some of what not to do. Or actually, I knew that stuff. Good reminder <laughs> of what not to do. But I still had fun on this trip, and hope you had fun watching. If you did, hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. If you want to check out my podcast, I'd appreciate it. It's a whole lot of fun too. Hope you catch a giant.